We are back with some more European Hearthstone Grandmasters, and we've got plenty more matches coming up for you guys. Silvername just took down Yala in his first match of the day, but we've got more where that came from. Sol, how's it going so far for you? Going good, yeah. It was definitely a long one. I did warn everyone <laughs> to uh, settle in, get comfortable, grab yourselves a drink. Um, Yala is well known for those kind of long, grindy series, but um, if there's any surprise to take from that, it's... Uh, that Silvername, who is perhaps less accustomed to that style of, you know, long, grindy games going all the way down to the bottom of the deck, was the one who actually came out on top. Yeah, it was uh, really impressive overall, and some of those games were very hard to navigate. Not only is the Galakrond mirror really tricky, as we saw there, because just even the smallest things can make the biggest impact, because you're both working with life totals almost every single turn. Uh, even the Spell Mage, which just went nutty, even though there can be ways in which, yes, you know, Reno starts favoring you or some of the generations help you out, you still have to stay in control of it, right? You can't just completely close your eyes and hope that the game does the job for you. You still need to actually make the plays to get the game there. So, Crash Chase is the silver name, but I believe we are going to be uh, going into the, uh, yeah, the winner's part of the bracket, as makes sense. It's going to be Felking versus silver name again. He had a bit of a break there just to get ready for this next matchup. But Felking, again, it'll be interesting to see how this goes up because I feel like Felking is playing a much more standard set of lists and he's just going to be going up against silver names a little bit more out there stuff especially considering the silver name warlocks banned out well he does have that zoo remember which True. is kind of True. his big kicker deck so there are still some unusual matchups to be seen here like spell mage versus zoo for example like how many times have people played that one on ladder um so definitely some uh, interesting permutations that we can come into we can see the lineup in mostly full detail there there is that zoo warlock i was talking about uh, the aggro demon hunter and then of course that spell druid that we've been seeing in just about every series up until this point um yeah pretty solid looking lineup you know i have defended that zoo a little bit even though i just i want to keep restating even though i like the deck it suffers from the problem of in my opinion galakrond warlock just being better right um, but, you know, the second best Warlock deck right now is still a very good deck based on how good the first best Warlock deck is. Yeah, and I think it'll be interesting to see how this flashes out over the next few weeks because with the additional couple of Demon Hunter nerfs, does that mean either Galakron Warlock becomes slightly less good um, or even the evolution of some of the Warriors does, you know, the defensive form of Galakron Warlock lessen a bit, which gives maybe people a little bit more wiggle room to go for that zoo instead or maybe just a slightly different kind of Warlock build. We'll have to find sure. out. But on Silvername's side, we does have that Druid as well and the Demon Hunter, it's the Tempo variant, but ma massively important, this Spell Mage, can it do it again? Well, it's done the job for him so far. We just got to sit back and find out, but it is, you know, one of the biggest X Factor decks, I would say, across this whole field, across all three regions. You know, we have seen some unusual stuff in uh, APAC and actually in Americas as well. Seen some very unique builds of uh, Warrior and various other things from uh, Language Hacker and a few other people. Um, so there are definitely very divergent paths in how these players are choosing to put their decks together. It seems like everyone has at least one slightly different idea as to what the uh, the lineup is for this first tournament. Yeah, and even that's going to be narrowed down even more next week, because not only are people already innovating on the decks they've seen this weekend and have been playing this weekend, but next week is going to be Last Hero Standing, which means the lineups won't be exactly the same anyway because you need to consider do you have an answer to a certain deck and can you be able to counter pick or are you going to build a deck full of sweep decks that you think are more uh, broad which can just take a full series by itself we're going to find out but it's just an extra layer for these players to consider when not only oh what's the best version of this deck i can make as a deck but what's the best version of the deck you can make for lhs yeah, yeah, big, big difference. And then, of course, everything goes crazy <laughs> the week after that when we get into uh, a 10 deck format, which, you know, obviously Paladin, for example, is, you know, receive a buff coming up. But, you know, if Paladin suddenly still isn't a force in the metagame, but you're forced to have a Paladin deck in your lineup. And then furthermore, using the example of Paladin, that isn't then going to be a deck that gets banned out right. from your opponents because they're not going to have any respect for it. So you actually do end up having to play it 
Like, what does that look like? What does the Paladin deck look like? What does the Shaman deck look like? You know, all these classes that we're not quite seeing being represented yet. Um, going to be very, very exciting going into week three in that 10 deck format. Yeah, definitely glad it is going to be week three, though, because it gives people more chances to just, again, just work on these decks, work on these classes. It's just a quick shout out. I did mess around a little bit with a list Jambre tweeted out recently which is his Galakron like Evolve Shaman. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it did, I went like seven and one. It does some work. Um, I won't tell you what rank I did that on, but I did it, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, go, get, on, get... go on, tell, tell the stream what your legend rank is. Go on, right do now, it, do it, do uh, it. top 30,000 is, is all <laughs> I'm going to say. Uh, that could be rank one, for all you guys know. Still technically a true statement. It could also be 29,900 and something. You'll just have to guess. Narrator voice. It's not rank one. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, getting back to this matchup anyway, although we are excited for the following weeks, we need to finish this one first. Felcane um, definitely has you know, the, the, the recent uh, streak and the recent run in terms of just his, his competitive performance. But for him, it's his first time in Grandmasters, where Silvername's been here now for the previous two seasons, survived to make it to season three. So he's doing something right. I believe we are going to be getting to the game very shortly. And just a note, the warrior is banned out. I mentioned Silverham's Warlock is gone, but Fel uh, Felcane's warrior is banned in. Uh, it's a shame, because I, I think the more I cast the deck, or the more I cast uh, the style, I guess, the more I want to cast it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like there's so much to yeah. learn for that. Yeah, yeah I, for I just sure. like, again, it's like, you know what? Just play this deck. You're allowed. I'm just changing the rules now. Just Q <laughs> Warrior and let me cast it over and over and over again, because... I feel like we're not even scratching the surface yet of how you play and how you even build the list. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. I think it's going to take me several reps of casting and also a lot more reps of actually playing the deck before I feel like comfortable with that deck at the level that I am with some others in the metagame right now. And that's A, because it's a slightly newer deck that I haven't had as much experience with, but also I think it's just an order of magnitude more complicated right. than a lot of other decks in the metagame right now. So yeah, it's one of the decks that I'm really most excited about seeing the development for going forward especially you know i think with the likes of hunter ace seemingly taking a pet interest in the deck mm. right now we saw what hunter ace for example did to the priest class last year in uh, in grand masters where all of a sudden you know three or four weeks in everyone was just playing hunter ace priest um so we'll see if that you know remains the same with this warrior deck moving forward yeah and i'm just excited to just track the uh the uh, i don't know the progression of his campaign already to nerf a card that barely anyone is playing. <laughs> um, I'm just, it's going to be very interesting to see. Because honestly, it's going to be great either way. One, it just never gets nerfed because there's nothing wrong with it at all. Or just imagine if he calls it like right now and it, you know, not too long down the line, it does end up, I don't know, being overpowered somehow, whatever. I, I don't see it myself. But uh, it's just very interesting to see. Huntrace is always a player you do want to keep just one eye on at least because whether he's playing the game or talking about the game, there's something important to listen to there. Yep, he's a hell of a guy and a hell of a player, and he does seem to just get the right idea of things sometimes. I will also say, most of you guys only like see the, the Hunter Race greatest hits when it comes to deck building. If, if you have Hunter Race on your friends list, there is a very good chance that he has sent you a complete trash deck at some point in your life and told you that this is the nuts. So he, he does kind of scattergun his approach at deck building sometimes, I mean... but... That does mean that he builds an absolute gem every now and again. Technically, I could attribute my rank on ladder to Hunter Ace to a certain extent because I did start playing his Libram Paladin, um, which was fun, but not fun for my ladder score. So um, maybe it's all Hunter Ace's fault, let's be honest. Anyway, we'll find out. Yeah. But enough, enough about, that. about our former world champion and on to two men who are vying in the very early stages of vying to become our next world champion, and that is Silvername and Velcane. And when their powers combine, it's Silvercane. Dude, I want a Silvercane. That sounds <laughs> pimpical. <laughs> Heck. Okay, well, he's going to be on the top with the Druid, and that's Silvername will be on this Demon Hunter, and it's something I did mention in Silvername's previous match, although it didn't get to be played because he had his Demon Hunter banned, but I really like this Consume Magic. Not a card we have seen too often, especially in the tempo lists, but I feel like it does have a spot there, and I'm surprised, I think, that more players haven't really jumped on board on this one. Yeah, I think, you know, just historically in Hearthstone, cards that have said, one mana, do a thing, draw a card, have been good. 
like mostly right, across the right. board, right? And silence isn't really the worst thing in the world to combine with that, right? right. I don't know, one mana silence is absurd considering we're playing three mana for an iron beak nowadays. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sightless Watcher. Skull of Gul'dan is obviously the good card, but it comes into his hand in an extremely awkward I... position. Is it that awkward? Consume Magic, Sigil Runner, Kane on four, and Kane, a Felwing uh, he can play Felwing out. Is cost zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, is yeah, it actually, a... um, yeah I think it's a good play. I'm chatting nonsense. Yeah, I think it's a very comfortable position, actually, now that I look at it. He right. did not go for it, though. He went for the uh, more immediate play of the Watcher and can go again in terms of looking for what he wants to place on the top of his deck. None of those, apparently, hmm. based on the look on his face. What about... Pretty, su pretty oh. surprised now that I look at it, though, that he did pass up the, uh, the Skull of Gul'dan. Yeah, and the problem with the Felwing is Kane doesn't quite cut it. He, he would want Twin Slice and the second Felwing, and he could actually have a huge play onto the board next turn. Yeah. But doesn't I mean, there's a there. decent chance his 3-2 just sticks, right? Like a definitively yeah. non-zero chance that his 3-2 sticks. Yeah, non-zero. I, I just think... A lot of the time, Druid runs so many removal tools, and they'll even use a uh, uh, oh, bog beam. <laughs> I nearly said it. Uh, even use just a, a three mana bog beam to just kill off, uh, you know, a given threat. Maybe if uh, Falcon's yeah. feeling that that dicey about its health. Yeah, sure. Demons. Maybe he just goes Sigil Runner and just says, ah, "I'll take the draw." But I just feel like he's just going to play Kane next turn, so he should really pick a uh, something that plays for a slightly longer game plan. I'm a dreamer. I'm just into that fell wing. I think he did end up picking the fell wing as well. I'm not sure about the first choice, but I I agree with that one. I think. Punished. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like cast division aside, obviously, like yeah. with it would have been very easy me with cast division. Like, oh, it never gets to attack next turn. But I think sight unseen, it has a pretty decent chance okay. of connecting. Yeah, maybe I've just been shut down too many times, but I feel like early game, Druid always has something. There's two crystal powers. Uh, Moonfires would still do it with a hero power. There's, um, you know, Wrath. You've also got to factor in, like, know. there's a very real chance that your opponent has, like, a Wrath in hand there, but wants to, like, coin overgrowth anyway and just lets you have a 3 2. You know? I, I like, guess, actually. Okay, yeah, okay. Like, there's a lot of scenarios where they just say, yeah, all right, fine, have your 3 2 and hit me with it, you know? Yeah, you know what? I didn't really put too much thought into the overgrowth there. But that was a filthy turn from Falcon, as it's turn four, and he just had KT out and <laughs> drew a million cards and healed. But Silvername does get the silence on, so it means that he doesn't have to overly worry about dealing with this KT right now. Yeah. As he has re re uh, reduced its effect, but has it already done too much, Subtle? It's a great question. I think these double fell wings are now going to give himself a fighting chance because without these extra minions, even though he's silencing the KT, he's still just kind of behind on board. It's a force, right? Seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like getting these two extra 3 threes into play makes the world a difference, I think. But that, oh, that overgrowth off the top actually informed the authorities. That's, <laughs> that is, that's disgusting. No. It's bug though. It didn't give KT time. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, never mind, there it is. There Just a go. graphical it, issue, clearly. <laughs> you know people are going to take that seriously and think oh, you don't know how Kane works, right? Like, you are aware how the internet works. I've had worse from the internet in my life, so it's fine. Okay. I can take okay. it. And uh, what Felkine's going to have to take is one heck of an Altria soon, because, my lord, <laughs> like, that, that is, is some damage in hand. That is a beefy boy. I wouldn't even play anything if I was Silver Name. I'd just go maximum damage next turn. How much do you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you play? And you get all? to Chaos yes. Strike too, as in yeah. the Chaos Strike does too. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? So you do kill the KT and probably any other board that you can. Well, I guess and, like Mount Seller well, with another buff on it or something is a. My problem. issue here is if he plays the Sator, is he really going to Twin Strike this turn? And if you're not. Do you really want to just put a 4 2 on the board? Right, yeah. No, I don't a good think point. it's worth it. I... That's a good point. Hmm. Silverdame oh, seems a little bit in between two, but he is going to go for any. Is he just. Sigil as well? Well, at that point, I feel like he should have just traded through the KT. 
with it with twin slice. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I'm kind of lost with that turn, honestly, Sal. Yeah, me too. I can't really get down with the line that Silver Name took there. I think you're right in that he just kind of got stuck halfway between two reasonable mm. plays and ended up with a not very reasonable one. And it's not Fine. as if the Altruist big turn would have left him stranded because Chaos Strike and Sigil draw him a card. He draws a natural card at the start of his turn anyway. So you've got to imagine he would still have juice in the tank, right? Even with blowing his whole hand on Altrius. So here's Glowfly. And... Okay, now Altrius is a pretty good turn. <laughs> and so, it's gone. Redeemed. Well, okay, not looking too surprised though. I don't think it's that often that you ever imagine you're just, you're flat. Glow flies to ever really stick, especially when they're already facing down some minions. Yeah. So this is definitely just it. Okay, you got my first wave. My second wave is where it counts. Yeah, I think you see when Falcon just kind of got to grips with just how insane his Altrice turn was, then he started to get concerned because, like you said, I think Altrice clear your board. Fine. Like Falcon's happy with that. <laughs> Look at him. Falcon's happy with that happening because then he, you know, he just rats the Altrice and he, he makes another board, right? He glow flies again and just, yeah, big deal, your turn, right? Like, you've used your one clear. I'm still at, what, 15, 16. You have a very small board and I've just played seven more glow flies. Instead, it's the complete opposite of that. He's at seven. There's a huge board alongside the Altrice. So he just can't do anything that mm. I just said. Like, the, he has to actually fully react and clear this board and he's not able to do that. Hmm. It's a tough one, isn't it? I don't even know where he goes here. Same. Wait, what? So there's no way you can wrap the 3-3. Three, three. That doesn't make any sense, surely. Was he thinking about if he draws a crystal power? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's a that's an argument for sure. Because again, like, I, I, you know... I feel like it's all we talk about now. I mean, Sol in that is, case, uh, no, but yeah, so, three health. But then, right, but this is this is still right though, right? Because you still kill a three-two yes. with the crystal power anyway. Yeah. And I think that's it, what so. he 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 got to right. It was yeah. just I think the initial thought of, but the crystal power does this very cleanly. But yep. what also does this cleanly is killing him. A silver name takes a very swift game number one with the tempo demon hunter off the back. Of the adept. And that is going to be game one going to Silver Name and off to a great start here. He's probably happy that that game went a little bit quicker than most of the games in the previous series. Uh, but still, fairly straightforward. I think it was just a rough one um, where that maybe holding the Altruist did just win Silver Name the game there. But I definitely didn't dislike the Altruist beforehand anyway. Oh, so to be clear, on that turn where I was just kind of iffy about what he ended up doing, I definitely wouldn't have played the Altruist that turn. Okay. Or considered it. It's just, I don't understand what the 4-2 being in play yeah, really Yeah, that, that was the big point, took, right? The 4-2 was I, the I issue. I yeah. didn't understand that. Like, it just felt like it should have been a thing that remained and, in hand so that his swing turn on his Altruist turn was even bigger. So he just has an even like more powerful swing turn with extra guys in play. But yeah, whatever, it worked out for him. I think with the power of that Altruist turn, um, he could have made a lot of decisions mm -hmm. a lot of different ways and it would have worked out fine, but it was a heck of a game. It was a good palate cleanser after the series we just had. Just a nice, <laughs> re not just a nice, re nice refreshing it's already sorbet finished. It's to already cleanse finished. the palate. Yeah. Like, what's going on? I thought we had another half an hour of that game at least. Uh, but yeah. no, that is just one and zero to Silver Name. And just a reminder for you guys, the winner of this will go on to tomorrow guaranteed. The loser is not out. They will be facing whoever wins the lower match, which will be the next one uh, a little bit later on today. So none of these players are out yet. The players are still going, but most importantly, the winner of this one can take the night off now because they will already be through to the final day, which is tomorrow. But there's plenty more to play for here. Falcane is not out. It's only one and zero, and we are playing in a best of five here. So we'll see what Silvername stacks up next. But it looks like Falcane is going to go for his Demon Hunter, which is going to be the Tempo variant. <laughs> the Tempo variant. Indeed it is. <laughs> um... 
We've seen, I would say, more success for this deck than the OTK version so far. Um, we've seen limited amounts of the OTK version, and it keeps running into No Hands Warrior, which is a really depressing matchup for it a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, although I have been alerted to some tech that might be able to change that matchup, but we will uh, get into that if it comes up. Um, but yeah, this is the more consistent, but to my mind, version of the deck in that it just keeps dealing damage. You just play aggressive minions throughout the game and hit your opponent with them and don't worry about dealing uh, 20 damage plus in the, the course of one turn because you've dealt that 20 damage plus by turn 5 anyway. So what are you worried about? Yeah, and, and the big I would say crossing point of why Tempo Demon Hunter is still probably just the best uh, for me at least is it doesn't sacrifice card draw to play aggressively that most aggressive archetypes do right normally right. if you play an aggro deck it's you, well you don't have much, much card draw as a combo deck or a control deck demon hunter just still has it because the draw cards are the best cards so you play them anyway and i think that's where like just the raw strength of tempo demon hunter comes from and it's going to be going up against this mage and i said earlier in silver name's previous match this mage feels like it is built way more to deal with something like demon hunter but Demon Hunter's still an, a good deck. So let's see how it goes out. Ray of Frost kept from Silver Name on the bottom there. Arcane Intellect and a Magic Trick. Not a bad opening at all. But Felkine has a pretty decent opening himself with a uh, flurry of two drops. Can I can I surprise you, Raven? You often do, Sotil. Go on. Because I'm... I, my Spell Mage information, I'm relying mostly on, on HS Replay and other stats that we have because I don't really have like personal uh, opinion and experience to go off. But according to that... Um, via legend data only, Tempo Demon Hunter is one of the worst matchups for this deck. Really? Yep. See, now this is okay, fine. Um, I, I mean, I'm not precious either way. My question then is if that's the case, uh, is there a reason for Double Flame or Double Ice Barrier as the, the four secret package and nothing else? Because it, if, if you're getting smashed through that, then it's almost like, well, why bother? You know what I mean? It's a great question. Yeah, I think mm. this deck has, has many mysteries yet mm. to be solved, not just the contents of the Ancient One. <laughs> it's a real interesting one, just because Netherwing Portal is, a, from my experience, a pretty good secret, especially with Ancient it Mysteries, because turn two, you get it active, and they play a spell, you gain a minion, so you at least kind of equal your opponent with tempo. So... Yeah, it's going to be going to be an interesting one. Annoying for Silverdame. And you couldn't get that learned Draconic off previously. It's four drops, right? That you get off the the secret? Did, what did drop? I say? No, I'm, I'm asking, is it four Oh, drops? yes. Yeah, it's a four drop, yeah. So it's often, like, big enough to be a nuisance, right? Like, so most four a, drops are a reasonable size. Uh, three, 4.1 on average? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, sure. What do you make of uh, Felfin, by the way? It's definitely the, one of the more cut, cuttable cards I've seen from lists. Yeah, it's... So I... Like, my deck building philosophy kind of leads me to not want to play this card because when I build a deck, I like to, like, hyper-tune it to do one thing very well. Um, whereas to me, like, Felfin is a card that can actually catch you up if you fall behind a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of that kind of utility. Um, I just choose not to play those kind of cards in my aggro decks quite a lot of the time because then okay. I am more consistently ahead. You know, I don't have to worry about that problem because I'm just playing more efficient, aggressive cards instead of contingency plan cards. Um, but I get it, and I've certainly I've seen it in this tournament be really good in a situation where probably no other card would be, and I've certainly like had that experience on ladder where um, where Felfin's just got me in in a place where no other card would have done. So like I, right. I like have respect for the power level. It's just not a card for me, I guess. Okay. Just yeah, I, I feel like it's definitely the card I've seen cut the most in tempo. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. But here, Felkang pretty much had to attack there. The deck isn't really built to say, well, if I wait, I can do this to beat the, the Flame Ward. It's like, well, no, you can't. It's going to get your minions. So I guess he's just getting through with it. And there was a 50, uh, you know, 50 50 chance it was Ice Barrier anyway. So I don't mind the attack there from Felkine. It didn't look bad, but it had to be done at some point. 
Yeah, I mean, what's he going to do? Power of the Wild, his minions? So that they that, that's what I mean. The, the, no. the deck doesn't run away to beat the AoE, yep. right? So just get it over with. And oh, the big boy buzzard <laughs> coming out there as the, the, <laughs> the massive five drop. Kappa. But the Learn Draconic is not too far away from being completed now. Next turn should be a done de uh, deal. I've got to be a little bit unhappy with that buzzard, though. And this... Felfin is where it just gets kind of ugly, right? Like, you know, two mana, four, two, okay, I guess, sure. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world, but you can think of some better cards you want to be playing in that position. Yep. I'm just trying to have a quick think as to if he wants to encounter his flow into Arcane Intellect, which seems like the natural path to take here. It will proc his uh, Draconic, but you can also rare frost this Felfin if he's that bothered. It's not like right. he's thinking, do I need to draw first to have like the most mana to deal with this Felfin? So I'm surprised Ooh, he's not in second Draconic. Too. Very nice. So, okay, so I'll answer me this, because I'm genuinely questioning my thing now. Go on. Was, do, do you think the Encanter's Flow was just a, just a given there? Like, was that really needing a double Ray of Frost? So, if you don't Ray it twice this turn, then mm. you still have to commit something to it next turn. So if you want to look at it in, like, again, I agree with you. I think I would have Encanted and then just frozen it once and worried about it next turn. Um, but I can, like, see some logic where I'd say, like, if I leave it on the board, if I just freeze it and I don't kill it, then I have to expend mana on it next turn as a problem. Okay. So therefore, that nullifies the discount that I'm getting from my Encanter's Flow for that one turn into my AI because I have to allocate mana to this 4-2 anyway. Like, I can see the logic behind that reason. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it would have... It's just one of those things where it feels so natural to discount and then draw that it would seem like, you know, almost crazy not to. But... He did skip it. It seems to be going so well. And this is what I meant earlier about sometimes you just get them with this deck, which feels weird. But mm -hmm. that 6-6 six, six does work. Like There's there's it, another one coming yeah, real soon. It doesn't just die. And also, Silvername didn't get to play it on one. So, oh, excuse me. There are, there are worlds where this comes out even a turn earlier, depending on obviously you know, what your hand looks like. But my point being is, you can get a 6-6 six, six very early, and there aren't that many decks that are actually equipped to deal with a 6-6 six, six around this right. time. Yeah, for sure. Falcane, really not in very good shape here whatsoever, is he? Oh, his option just to... Put five oh. to the face. I respect it. Oh. For those. Oh. oh, wow. All right, next game. Wait, what are we feeling here, Sol? I mean, take your freaking pick. I don't really care. <laughs> I, I think I would have liked the Cairns just to really, really show <laughs> off. But the car took probably by far the most safe options. And, and it just doesn't stop from here, does it? Another power of creation next turn. Blizzard to clear this up. Falcon basically needs a Skull of Gul'dan at this point. This has to be Spectral Sight, exactly. That Ooh, is not I mean, Spectral not Sight. A, not the worst, but not yeah, great. Yet. Still not Spectral Sight, though, is it? <laughs> I agree. It is not. <laughs> he needed Spectral Sight into Twin Slice and Skull of Gul'dan there, I think. So he twin slices this turn to like finish off his turn and then coins metamorphosis for like a pretty effective clear. And then he has Skullagul down in hand for next turn. Yeah. I think the most important thing is he knows that even if he cleared this board perfectly, he doesn't win off the back of that. No. So he needs the refill to actually have the rest of the game plan. I grow yeah. Whereas Silvername, even just this second power of creation is probably good enough. He's going to use the coin for the extra ultra spin, which I like. He's not like the coin's going to do too much now anyway. He gets the hero power as well, which is actually pretty important. Mm. It oh, enables that's true. The, yeah, the, that's the full true. clear this turn. Yeah. You know what? It's the one thing my mind will not deal with is the metamorphosis power into hero power. It, it trips me all the time. Mm -hmm. Let me go for Blizzard. I like this. 
just needs to clear this off and now he's just forcing Felkine to play off the top of his deck. And if this isn't exactly Skull or Spectral Vision, it's probably not good enough. It's probably wah, not wah. good enough, Sol. <laughs> no. <Nope>. Analysis sticks. <laughs> Chalk that one up over firmly not good enough. Silver name is at 32. <laughs> and this honestly is how I thought the deck was built for. You know, you know what I mean? Like to, to try and like freeze, stall, AoE the minions down, and then summon some stuff to win the game. This is how I thought it worked. Obviously, if you're telling me it actually loses this matchup, then. Hey, fine. whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> oh, sorry. If HS3 play on the stats, tell me. Hey, that that's the case, and that's fine. But for now, I think Silver Name at least displayed what I thought the deck was supposed to do. I'm not saying it does yeah. do that all the time, but it's what I thought it was built for. Purely just looking at the deck list. I agree with you. I mean, based on based on what we saw, and also just based on looking at the deck lists, like mm. you would think that you know Ancient Mysteries into Flame Ward and Ice Barrier, whatever, would stall for long enough for suddenly then Blizzard and Rolling Fireball to become active, and then suddenly Power of Creation would just be, you know, too big a board for even Altruist to answer, for example. Which is, that's how you would look at it, looking at the deck list in theory. Right. And that seemed like how it played out in that one game sample size that we just watched, but yeah, apparently that is a 42% matchup for the Mage. Wow. And, and yeah. one thing I will say is, I feel like that Mage deck has a lot of room to mess it up and to go wrong, sure. right? Because it is a weird deck. It's not really an archetype people have ever had the, to play with before. So maybe that affects like, you know, the, the numbers that we've pulled out from the void of, of every player or, you know, in whatever ranking. So maybe mm. that's a part of it where it's such a weird deck to play that people aren't mm. executing it very well. But anyway, we'll see how it develops if Spell Mage becomes maybe even more popular post nerf as it's not really affected. But let's go into game number three and Sylvanae might be on for... Um, you, you probably had enough, didn't you, against Yarl? He's like, right, I'm making this next one quick. Um, and wants to go for a quick 3-0 here through Felkane. And Felkane's going to put his trust in his zoo to kick it off. Yeah, he's just going to say, you know what? If we're going out, we're not going out without playing this zoo. I'm going down swinging. Although he's still um, at the upper side of the bracket as he won the opening series. So he still has a second chance of redemption after this, if, if even if he was to lose this series. Yep, no one out quite yet, and that's the uh, position they put themselves in by winning their first match of the day, respectively, so... Coin Let's... Hero Power instead of Coin Fungal Fortunes. Exciting. Works out for it. Okay. So the bet you're taking there is that your opponent develops less power on turn two as Zoo than they do on turn one, which, as we were discussing earlier, I think <laughs> mm -hmm. is actually correct, because I think this version of Zoo life taps on turn two, like, almost always. Yeah, it, it, um, it's so a actually, pretty good take, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And honestly, don't think it's a play I would have made, but considering I keep harping on about the deck not being Zoo, um, it's probably a play I should have made in that spot. That's pretty Bees spot. does not get the job done versus this magic carpet. Is there any point of softening it up subtle no not that i can see based on his hand but he does i would imagine have some outs is i forget since the last time we watched this deck is he still playing crystal powers or is that one of the cards that's gone down to look for the uh force of nature and stuff he is he is, he still is playing, playing crystal yeah powers. it's the moon fires remember that he's uh, that's right he's not that's right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay just a tough one because with the carpet down you also imagine a Power of the Wild Panther is going to get farmed, right? You, you have mm -hmm. to imagine that, surely. If mm -hmm. if a carpet has been played, there is something that Felkine can do to follow up with that. Yeah, I don't see the merit of throwing minions into this. Um, like, Sorry, that's very ambiguous based on this hand. I don't think you should just develop minions for them to be able to rush into. Mm -hmm. You could play bees and quite literally throw minions into it. I think that's actually Oof. very reasonable. But actually doing it the other way round here, he's going to go Savage Roar first so that he has the guaranteed B set up, which I guess um, is a plan to get him through taunts uh, more importantly than anything else. Hmm. And maybe right now, Bees is like the more flexible choice of the two. Sure. Because maybe you don't end up Bees in that and, you, you know, something else comes out that you really need to take care of and it leaves you with tokens left, for example. I don't know. But that reminded me of... Uh, what was it 2016 2015 maybe gfinity when hoy like turned three um savage rod against secret paladin um to kill a knife juggler i think it was 
Man that was... blew everyone's mind. My I remember man was seeing blown. that. My man was blown. Yeah. I remember watching that. Just be like, well, yeah, of course you killed yeah, the knife juggler. It's a knife juggler. And everyone, everyone was losing their mind over that. Subtle play. pushed but up yeah, his I glasses remember. and was like, mm, yes, of, of course. <laughs> And I just slapped the glasses off Saul and was like, don't you wear glasses just for that comment. <laughs> hey, I was I was really good at the game back then. Never forget. Mm, yeah. How things change, eh? I know, I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, it was just that play just, just blew. It's just that, that turn just reminded me. Just there, uh, triggered the memory. Mm. But here, this Aeroponics into an Anubisath Warden is just how many five mana cards can you play on turn five question for Silvername? Because he, he wins that competition. later potentially uh, and it's also, also just and it's also just the, burst damage. the demai yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is important whereas you know oh throw away an argent squire or a shield bearer okay you know that's that's not damage from hand <laughs> another anubis after defender and with the innovate means that he can overflow and still get a taunt off ah the old vape flow noob of course <laughs> The old forbidden technique. Yeah. What to do? Doesn't do anything about this board state, though, does it? But that is kind of the weakness of this druid, is that it doesn't do anything about a lot of board states. It just mm. tries to create bigger a, ones A cooler itself. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Silver name looking like he's about to get smacked here. Yeah, and funnily enough, uh, shock horror after everything with disgust. This gameplay style from Felkai in this game has looked the best for me. <laughs> so it's like, why this not was play just Zoo Minions? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he just like, played Minions. Imagine if some of those Minions were Flame Imps. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You know, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I'm being very silly and I understand the powers of this archetype. But for me, it's like, I think Zoo actually might just be well positioned right now. Should we just play Zoo? <laughs> like actual Zoo. I mean, obviously, against against Druid, right? If you have minions yeah, in your hand, yeah, you yeah. play those minions and you hit them. That's that's just kind of how beating Druid mm, works. Yeah, and yeah, has done since the beginning of time. Oh well, Ooh. bit too late to the party there, friend. One scrappy boy. Very important though. The seven five does not die with the trade, which is a pretty big mm. deal, honestly. It means he can clear up this board and still put forward a bit of pressure. I think he just goes in, right? Yeah, I really like. I'm not even sure if there was a draw, but like life tapping into a what? way to kill the four six with the self fire and the one two even like would have been amazing what? there. What if just, he just you get plays with the seven five? What if he just plays it all apart from sack pack and then just soul fire and try and draw? Sure. And then just analyze after that. Because I think he needs the draw, right? He can't rely on top decking a win this turn. So I think you just go all in on the highest chance of drawing. He can't. Unfortunately for him, he can't he just... sacrificial pack to the... Uh... Oh, wait, it's a demon, right? Is the 7-1 a demon? No, yeah, it's not. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like, do you just sack your 7-1 just in mm. order to guarantee the soul fire? But no, he decides not, not to. Okay. Yes, it is a demon. Okay, okay. He decides what? to hold and just maintain the board presence, which I think is pretty sensible and as well. There's like every chance he can just do this next turn, right? Which is, seems and, fine. And this turn, although looks okay for Silver Name, I'd argue it's actually pretty okay for Felkine as well because his seven five is healed, yeah, <laughs> which means any again. cheat removal is is long gone. And there was only a three five put in the way. And there's Soulfire, there's Hand of Gul'dan, and there's a demon he can sack Ooh, pack to guarantee lovely. the draw. Soulfire with the Argent Squire to kill off the Anubis after protect the health as well on his other minions means that this is lined up six mana to spend. That's a stone to spore. Wait, is that two, four, five, twelve? Yeah, six. Oh yeah, of course. No, it's one off. 
one off, one off, one off. Huh? Oh, second ball. No, he's got I didn't a second even ball. Yeah, he had a second ball. It's <laughs> one I, over. I wasn't counting the carpet damage on the ball because I lock my head into carpet giving rush, not oh, charge. Right, right, right. But the ball's obviously got charge. But yes, it's going to be the game there from Falcon, and he does fight back, getting a win with his warlock there. And uh, didn't I, I think the more I watch the deck, the more I appreciate the power of the card draw slash discard combo above anything else. Right? It's like do what you want with the rest. But I think we can all agree that recycling discards on that, and we didn't even see the 2-1 get involved either, which is nutty, um, is very, very powerful, especially if you're playing an aggro form where you do just want to draw, 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 and go. And that is insane, however you end up building it. Yeah, there's a number of different builds around. Like, you know, if you just want to play, like, Flame Imps and the most efficient minions, you can do that. But just make sure you've got the Skull of Gul'dan, like, um, uh, package around that because that sorry hand of that uh, sorry hand of Gul'dan not Skull yeah, of Gul'dan yeah, very different cards uh, the hand of Gul'dan discard package in there alongside that um, there's also versions with like lackeys and you know sinister deal discover a lackey and evil genius to you know add more lackeys to your hands so you've then got more stuff to get hand buffed from the scrap imp you, as long as you've got that core package of scrap imp and the discard package build whatever else you want around that mm. certainly like i just personally really like making massive shield bearers because it's hilarious <laughs> and no one can tell me that. otherwise um whether or not it's the most for. optimal build of the deck i have i have no idea yeah one thing that i will say has disappointed me though is the lack of wisps so that would have brought that would have brought the game back that would have brought the deck yeah. back in my opinion <laughs> now, now you're cooking if you're playing wisp in a deck you gain my respect okay <laughs> just just no matter what the deck is you've gained it we're friends but now we're going to go swiftly straight into game number four between Falcon and Silvername. Silvername on his druid again, of course. Falcon now switching to the Temple Demon Hunter with a fairly solid start, I'd have to say, so. Yep, looking pretty rosy here as far as I can see. But Silvername not too bad himself. He has minion to contest into removal and then very rapidly into Glowfy Swarm Anubis Path, which is a pretty good counter punch on turn five. It is, yeah, yeah, it is, and it, as always is the case, I think a lot of this depends on Falkine's upcoming card draw, which he can manipulate a little bit with Silas Watcher, potentially, um, because yep. if you just look at this hand, well, he, he runs out of stuff pretty soon. If he gets a Vision or if he gets a Skull of Gul'dan, this changes, of course, but so far, it's not there. That's Umberwing. This is the awkward turn for silver name though the one that's going to be difficult to fill yeah bees is just about perfect sure sign me up yep it's looking pretty good so far the twin slice although a really good card uh, just isn't gonna cut it quite yet Falcon is gonna build this board up take care of the bees but as was mentioned a little bit earlier silver name is able to make quite the board it really is just this cane now is the hurdle he has to jump over. As we can see, Falcon does not have any card draw. Aeroponics as well, though, is a pretty big deal. And I wonder if that's going to change his line of play in the future with that force of nature available to him to make that a little bit cheaper. It's going to be the Glowflies with the Anubisath Defender. As expected, it's only three Glowflies, so not really the, the maximum seven you're all after. Or maybe even in this case for Silvername, the six Glowflies, so he could have still played the Anubisath. But it's something. And I think with the Force of Nature, the Iron Bark, and then Arid Ponyx, Silvername's okay with him just holding on here. He just needs to continue the game out because he has access to card draw. He has access to you know some form of taunt as well, even after this Anubisath. He's right. just got to hope that he can take down this cane and Felkine does run out of juice and the weapon's really good. And the Satis Watcher does need to find card draw, at least in my opinion. Yeah, it looks like board contention wise he'll be fine here but he's probably gonna need to find you know overflows and the like to be able to get out of this oof fungal fortunes all right well he, he found overflow uh, yeah, that's a bit of an ugly draw, though, isn't it? 
Mm, at least he can kill the cane and have a taunt. <laughs> Technically, that works. Would be uh, an actual functional real life taunt. What do you know? Yeah. Okay, well, here's the watcher and here's the question. Card draw of any shape, Crimson, Sigil, Runner, uh, although Altress, great card, I beam, great card. I, I think he has to go for the Runner just to be able to get something else next turn. Let's see what he, I didn't even quite pick up on what he chose there, so we'll see that very shortly. But for now, Silvername does have some time, and he does have an overflow, which means that seven mana heal five, draw one million cards. Mm -hmm. And even the innovate into the crystal power if he really feels defensive. Or even heal five, if, if he deems that to be a little bit better. But I think crystal power on the three, two, probably heals him more over time. And he's only... Yes. I would argue, yes. But that Iron Bark now is a very mm. big deal with the Kane Sun Fury already gone. Yep, taunts actually work now. And also, uh, I think Silverdame is just hoping and hoping and hoping that Falcon just has one more dud turn. Because he'll know that Falcon has nothing, right? Because yep. he would have done something more with his three mana in Tempo Demon Hunter. He's going to go for it. Crystal Power. And I like this. Although... Does heal the five. Okay. okay. I guess he thinks that if he just doesn't die this turn, KT does the rest, right? Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Frenzied um, Falling. Falcane mm. looks less than amused with his Frenzied Falling drop off. Yeah. Nothing else really to do, just ship it all face, hope for the best. And is this going to be Silver Name securing the game and the series for him here? Because it looks like it's going to be quite the ask for Felkine right now to get through this. And especially the, this being the card that triggers the KT effect is just perfect, isn't it? It's like, draw me a ton of spells, let me pick what I want, you know, to be able to be active and, and either heal, taunt, draw more, you know, whatever. It's insane. Right. And there's all the forest as well. Not that Silvernet really needs it, but if you can get away with it, it does protect him from some kind of Altris, like, you know, draw combo, maybe. Oof. So does that, though, as well. And Felkine, I, I, I think you see him there. Shake of the hands, shake of the head. Not much you can do from now. And this is one of those extremely rare occasions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Careful. Careful, Silvernet. Oh, draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He picked up the overflow for at least a moment there. Let's hmm. let's not get too just ahead of ourselves. Silver power of the Wild, Crystal Power, right? Let's just be safe. Sure. Right, Crystal Power to heal, I'm guessing, just to... Just in yeah. case, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, Metamorphosis is still a card that yeah. exists, I guess. You're scared of, so... There, okay, hmm. well... Interesting, he shoots for two. I, okay. I think he had to just quickly pick there didn't he because yeah, i think right. he st stuttered it for a second and Falcon. honestly this is one of the rare occasions where demon hunter didn't really draw his draw cards and this the reason demon hunter is so good is because this is a rarity this right. is like mm -hmm. spotting you know an endangered animal or something because mm -hmm. this just does not really happen and you see the deck falls over pretty hard when you just can't draw it becomes a, a, a almost like a face hunter deck with a worse hero power arguably Sure, yeah. Makes sense. Falcon just soaking it in, but I do just not see an out. <laughs> gazing off into the distance, hoping that inspiration will strike him, but I don't think it's coming somehow. Yep, he's not literally dead yet, uh, so he is still technically in the game. Can't blame him for just playing it out, but I don't even know. what Would it Would it have to be just Skull into an unknown card that wins the game? Right now, yeah, Skull I into... Guess. What, Skull into Altrius, Twin Strike... Uh, twin Slice, sorry, and... Hmm. I-Beam? 
get I'm just, eye beam or the yeah i'm just trying to think what gets there like yeah in terms yeah. of damage you know heal damage to get him there i don't know but now i think i think as long as silver name just presses soul of the forest at some point he's just safe right mm -hmm. he did and that should be the uh, the final nail in the coffin here, I think, for Velkai, because now he can't clear, even with the best skull in the game. And I don't think there's the draw potential to do nine damage through taunt if he clears the taunts as well. I think it's impossible. And... Oof. Not enough. And that is going to be Silver Name taking the series, unless you see something I don't, <laughs> which I'm. I absolutely do not know. I was thinking about when you said it, like, can he just deal nine damage with Altruist or any combination of draws? So. But yeah, it seems unlikely, right? Skull of Gul'dan. Well, actually, no. Skull of Gul'dan into Altruist plus a Spectral Sight that is outcasted, and then you play the Spectral Oh, maybe, Sight maybe. Zero yeah. as well. It can probably happen. So actually, I think there might have been a chance there to, to get it done. Yeah, there was always a chance there. But Silverlane does it. He wins through his group. And that means he's going to be into tomorrow, which is the final day of week one of Grandmasters here. But Falcon is not out. He will be playing a little bit later on uh, to fight for the second spot that's available in tomorrow for the rest of this group. But we've got a couple more matches coming up for you guys. But don't go anywhere. And we'll, we'll be right back with some more Hearthstone.